Today we're going to discuss permutations and combinations, which are basically just arrangements of items, and there's a unique difference between the two. In permutations, we're going to talk about arrangements of items where order is important. So the order in which you place them has a lot to do with how you're going to calculate the problem. Depending on the publisher you use, you may have two different notations for this. There's NPR or PNR, where N is the total number of objects you're taking from, and R is the number of items from that set number of objects that you want to place. The way to calculate this is you take N factorial, or the total number of items factorial, over n minus r factorial and you'll get the number of permutations. Let's take a look at a couple of problems and see what this looks like. You want to know how many ways you can arrange four different books on a shelf. So typically if you look at a shelf the order in which you arrange those books are going to matter so this is a permutation. We have four total items so what we can do is we can say p from four total items and we're going to choose all four. So if I was to grind that out by hand, we have n factorial, so that's four factorial, all over four minus four factorial because r is four, which gives us four factorial over zero factorial. Four factorial is four times three times two times one. And we have 0 factorial, which is just equal to 1. So this gives us a total number of 24. We can also do this on our calculator. And we'll start out by hitting the number 4, moving to math, going over to probability, PRB. You notice here's our NPR. And then we're going to hit 4 again, followed by enter, and that gets us our 24. Now, a little more intuitive way to get this problem done is actually draw out your bookshelf, where you have 1, 2, 3, 4 spots in which to place things. And if I want to set something down in this first spot, I have 4 books to choose from. Now, taking that book away, I have 3 books left and 3 books from which to place. So I have three choices for the second, two choices for this spot, and one choice for this spot. And just like in our counting principle, we multiply all those together. Same type of problem. Next, you've got Mary, who's a consultant, and during June, she visits four of six cities she works with, and you want to know how many ways that she can travel to these four of six cities. Well, again, that's permutation because the order in which she travels to those cities is, is going to matter. So what we have is from six total cities, we're taking and arranging four, so that's six choose four, or six arrange four in this case. And once again, if I had to calculate that, that's six factorial over 6 minus 4 factorial, and we can calculate that out. Another way to take a look at this is say she has four cities, and she has a choice of any one of six cities to visit first, so she has six choices to visit first. After she's visited that city, she has five more cities from which to choose, then four more, and three left from there. So if I, again, use the counting principle, I multiply all those numbers together and get my final solution, which in this case is, I believe, 360. And you can calculate that out from there. Another problem is a ski club's got 32 members, and we want to know how many ways a person can select a president and a vice president. So since there's an order or a hierarchy to the cabinets are choosing, we have two places from which to choose, and the order in which they choose them is going to matter. President, then vice president, 
from those that are left. So we've got 32. And we're arranging two items from there. I could say from over the president spot, I've got 32 members from which to choose. And then for the vice president spot, I've got 31 members to choose. Once again, we've got 32 factorial over 32 minus 2 factorial. And again, let's just see how this works out. That's 32, 31, 30. Just keeps going until you get down to 1. In the bottom, we have a 30. 29, you go until you get down to 1. All of these go, and we're left with 32 times 31, which is what we had right over here. In this next problem, I've got a teacher making a multiple choice test up, wants to give each student the same questions, but have each student's questions appear in a different order. There's 27 kids in the class. What's the least number of questions that the test must contain? So, what they're really asking is, how many different tests can I make, and I have to make 27 different tests? So, clearly, if I had one question, I could only make one test. If I had two questions, then I could make two times one test. If I had three questions, I could make 3 times 2 times 1 test, which gives me a total of 6. If I had 4 questions, I could make 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 test, which gives me a total of 24. I'm getting close. So then if I had 5 questions, and chose all of them and put them in order on a piece of paper, I could have a total of 120 tests. This will certainly cover a class of 27. So basically, the answer for this would be five questions. Next, we're going to talk about combinations. And combinations are, again, arrangements, but in this case, the order in which you put them doesn't matter. Notation for combinations is either NCR or CNR. Once again, N is the total number of objects and R is the subset of items taken from the total number of objects. Notation goes into a computation of n factorial over n minus r factorial, that's the same as permutations divided by r factorial. And in this case, you'll notice a coach has got to choose five starters from a team of 12 players, and you want to know how many different ways the coach can choose these starters. So the order in which you pick them to be in your lineup is not going to matter in this case, just the five people out there. So what we're doing, because order doesn't matter in this case, we're taking from a total of 12 and we're choosing five. So in this case, we can again use our calculator and we'll start out with the number 12. We'll hit our math button, go over to probability again, and here's our NCR, so I'll hit 3, and we're going to choose 5, and that gets us 792 different ways to choose that lineup. In this problem, you've got a conference of nine schools that are going to be setting up a football schedule. You've got to play each team once and exactly once and the order in which you play them doesn't matter so whether you play them in the beginning of the season or at the end of the season has no effect on the problem so this is again combination 
choosing from nine teams total. And we're picking groups of two. So again, we put that into our calculator. Hit 9C2. And we end up with a total of 36. This last problem is broken down into a couple of parts. The first one, not too bad. The second one's a little more difficult. We've got 14 juniors and 23 seniors in a service club. And they want to send four to a state conference. And the question is how many different ways you can select a group of four students to attend from all these guys. So if I have 14 and 21, it gives me a total of, oh, sorry, 14 and 23. That gives us a total of 37 kids. So we've got 37. We're going to choose four from there. That's just a standard calculator problem. So let's go grind that out. We've got 37. Choosing four. Which gets us about a few, 66,045 ways. Now the next problem is where it's a little more difficult. If the members of the club are to be two juniors and two seniors, how many different groups are possible? Well, we've got two, item, two things going on, or two events going on. One is choosing a junior and then choosing senior. So this is kind of like a counting principle problem where we're going to find out the total number of ways I can choose a junior, total number of ways I can choose a senior, and then multiply them together. So this goes back to the other day. So the total number of ways to choose a junior and ensure it's a junior is picked from the group of juniors. So we have a total number of 14 juniors, and we're going to choose two of them. And then we've got a total of 23 seniors, and we're going to choose two of those. Once again, this ensures that I've picked a junior. This ensures that I've picked a senior. Two separate events. Find the total number of ways, multiply them together. We can grind this out on our calculator. 14C2 is going to give us roughly 91. 23C2 is 253. Going to multiply those together. And I get a total of 23,023. So once again, to summarize, permutations is where we're arranging things and order matters. Combinations, pretty much, I think you found out a lot of times is a grouping where order doesn't matter. It's just a group. Fill out your lesson summary. Do your My Math Lab. We'll talk more tomorrow.